I talked about this on Cobra Cast a little bit earlier, but I wanted to get further into this because I find this to be a very interesting story. Mark Cuban is jealous of Donald Trump and Elon Musk. Very much so. He's very upset about these two men and how popular and prominent and how influential they are. And his interview with Jon Stewart says just as much, and it shows how jealous and envious he really is. But you add this tweet from Patrick Bet David kind of breaking the whole story down, and, and I do think it's a very interesting conversation. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to listen to this conversation that he had with Jon Stewart where he's essentially crying that Elon Musk is more famous and popular than him, and then we will talk about it. I mean, it. look at Elon, right? Elon, in being one of those powerful people, he's trying to be the most influential man in the world. It sounds like a commercial, but literally that's what Twitter has given him. I, I, I've got to say, I think he might be that. I don't, I don't even think he's trying to be. When you, when you talk about somebody who is setting up satellite links for war zones and also controlling discourse in well, the most important well, media the, platform, I would think he's right? the most powerful. Because Twitter is in every, almost every country, right? And so Twitter gives him the ability to connect to the prime minister, the head of every country in the world. That's right. And that, that person, whoever's in charge of that country, has an interest in what happens on Twitter. And what happens on Twitter, because of the control of the algorithms being the biggest user, is all dependent on Elon Musk. He Pretty interesting how Mark Cuban never really had this concern when it pertained to Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook. But, oh, Elon, Elon, since he's friendly with Donald Trump, it must be a concern because... It, Elon Musk has opinions that don't line up with the narrative, and suddenly that's a concern. It wasn't a concern when Jack Dorsey owned Twitter. It's not a problem when Mark Zuckerberg literally is censoring at things that could affect the election. That wasn't a concern to Mark Cuban. No, no, no. But Elon, oh, that's a big deal, apparently. Literally, wherever his thumb wants to go, he gets to push as hard as And he certainly, I mean, uh, he's transparent about where he wants things to go. I think he's very clear that... Uh, Civil war is inevitable, right. and that I mean, white people are under the concerning. gun. Concerning. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, he'll, you know, it'll be like, civil war is inevitable, and then he'll write underneath there, hmm, you know. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> kind of an understatement on there. But uh, I, can't, I can't decide whether or not it's better to know exactly where he stands and know where he's going to be put the thumb on, because he's not, he's clearly a very bright guy, yeah, for sure. and he has a media empire that has the largest reach and most influence of anything on the face of the earth, and there's no question he's going to leverage it for in sure. this election. Yeah, the, no question. But the Leveraging a social media platform to influence an election? Oh, wow, John Stewart's breaking news here, ladies and gentlemen. We have never... We have never seen a social media platform being used to leverage an election. This is the first time it's ever happened. Elon Musk must be stopped. We have never seen this. Holy crap, this is breaking news. Unbe Thank you, Jon Stewart. Where would we be without Jon Stewart letting us know that Elon Musk is taking a social media platform and trying to influence an election? We have never seen anything like that. The crazy part is he has more impact globally than he does domestically, in my opinion, right? Because when you go on X, you see a preponderance of right-leaning people. You don't see a lot. They're all over my for you. I've never clicked on any of these things. Well, that's the whole thing. That's the way algorithms work, right? He what? Yes. <laughs> They do the opposite of what I want? Yes. When somebody tells them, when you write an algorithm, I haven't written a lot, it's been a while, but when you write one, you get to set the, um, the parameters of what you want to see happen. And he certainly has done that to the things he likes. But it's different in other platforms, and the good news is, what, 20% of adults in the United States are on Twitter? Why would it be different on other platforms? Would it be different on other platforms because other platforms write it differently to uh, appease their interest? But Mark Cuban doesn't have a problem with that, does he? No, 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 not sure. at all. So, I mean, there's 80% who aren't there. But isn't this a certain amount of uh, tech bro malpractice that there is this incredible uh, need in the marketplace of something that is slightly less uh, biased or, you know, toxic when it comes to there and no, like they came out with threads and you're on it for two seconds and you're like i think i need an app no i like threads threads is getting better try it no, yeah it's getting here's better. something that doesn't sell online no it's getting better <laughs>
So that's the it's one of the f- only funny things John Stewart said in that whole clip. Now, Patrick Bet David put this tweet out that I saw during my live stream, and I do think this is a very, very good um, breakdown. Mark Cuban's recent attacks towards Trump and Musk reveals only two possible outcomes. Either he's plotting his next big move by CNN, by a media platform since he sold a big chunk of the Mavs campaign for 2028. Or he has no moves and he's just envious. If it's number one, then more power to him. Attack the big dogs in media and politics. If he doesn't and it's envy, then here's why he's acting the way he has. There are two types of competitors out there. Those who win by outworking, out-improving, out-strategizing, or outlasting. Now, I will say of these two scenarios, I think it's a little bit of both. I think that there's no doubt that he's envious of Trump and Musk. He's always been envious of Trump, and now he's super envious of Elon Musk. So I think he's clearly envious. I also think that he definitely wants to make some type of move, but I think it's built off envy and jealousy. That's what I believe. But he's going to make... I do believe there's something that he wants to do. He's got the money. He's got the you know notoriety. He's got the fame. He can do something if he wants to. Is he on these guys' level? No. Mark Cuban is not on Donald Trump's level. He's not on Elon Musk's level. He's just not. It doesn't mean that he's irrelevant. And I mentioned this during my live stream earlier where I said, from a sports standpoint, Clyde the Glide Drexler was great. He was awesome. He was a basketball player during the Jordan era. He was excellent. He was excellent in college. He was excellent in the NBA. But there was Michael Jordan. A guy named Michael Jordan was in the league. So Clyde Drexler, awesome player. Super awesome guy, but he just didn't get the notoriety because Michael Jordan was there. Donald Trump and Elon Musk, they're the Michael Jordan in this scenario. It's certainly not Mark Cuban. Um, There are two types of competitors out there. Uh, Those who win by outworking, outimproving, outstrategizing, and outlasting. Those who no longer work as hard as they once did and do everything in their power to discredit their competitors ahead of them. Both Donald Trump and Elon Musk have something he doesn't have. They each annoy Cuban for different reasons. Trump is 12 years older than Cuban. Musk is 13 years younger than Cuban. Trump, he's envious of Trump because of a third element of being the trifecta. Both are billionaires. Both have an award-winning show. Only one became president. Trump is 12 years his senior, but willing to outwork Cuban at 78. And most annoying of these four is outlast him. I'm not sure if Mark Cuban is yet willing to work as hard to become president. Musk. The part about Musk that may annoy Cuban is why he still, uh, why does he still continue to build and drive long after being a billionaire? How much more money does he have to make? Why does he think uh, so big? Why is he more famous than Cuban, though he's never had a TV show or owned a professional sports team? I think this right here is eating him up. I think this eats Mark Cuban up. One more time. Why Elon Musk? Why is Elon Musk more famous than Mark Cuban, even though he's never had a TV show or owned a professional sports team? That has got to eat Mark Cuban up. Is he smarter than Cuban as an engineer in business and in winning the crowd? How? Cuban chose uh, the force community to win over. And here is the communities that he is saying he chose to win over. You know, wokey issue, all that stuff. Musk chose the freedom community right here. Uh, Since Cuban is a fierce competitor, it must drive him insane to see an older and younger man ahead of him. This shouldn't bother the average person. The average person doesn't believe in themselves enough to know uh, they can compete with Musk and Trump. But Cuban thinks very highly of himself. And that's why I'm convinced it hurts Cuban as much as it does. He only has three options. Go after Musk and Trump, but choose to get into the arena and compete. Buy CNN, buy a platform, start a podcast like the All In Pod, uh, but do something. Run for office. Uh, Sit on the sidelines and focus on your next 5 to 15 moves. Um, Or just be an influencer 
uh, and a spokesperson for the mainstream media and the woke lunatics of the left. Um, either way, I think he has no choice but to make some very big moves or else uh, he will have a high level of bitterness envy. Um, so that was a really good breakdown of the whole scenario. And I know that a lot of people want to dismiss Mark Cuban, but I don't think that that's necessarily a smart move. Mark Cuban is... I've watched Shark Tank for years, just like I watched uh, The Apprentice and The Celebrity Apprentice. Um, from a star level standpoint, there's no comparison in terms of Donald Trump versus Mark Cuban. There's no comparison. Donald Trump is a once in a lifetime uh, charisma machine. Um, he just has unique uh, qualities that he's a showman. Uh, he just knows how to connect with people and there's no one like him. But when I watched Shark Tank, and I very much enjoyed the show Shark Tank, Mark Cuban was easily the alpha in that situation. He just was. He was always the most important guy. He was always the guy that everyone wanted to hear from. What's Mark Cuban think? What, what is he doing? He was always plotting. He always had a certain level to him, and he was always that guy. So to dismiss him because he's a left-wing lunatic, I don't think is necessarily fair because he has accomplished a lot. He's, as a sports fan, I've, I've known of Mark Cuban for a long, long time, and he does have elements right there. And I think he is someone that you should look to as a potential player from the left-wing standpoint. I know a lot of people are going to dismiss him because of his politics, and while his politics are absolutely retarded and insane... We're talking about a very, very successful person with a very strong personality and a lot of connections. And if this is something he wants to do, this could be uh, something to at least pay attention to. But he's just not on the level of Donald Trump and Elon Musk. And I'm not sure he ever can be. Um, but his jealousy and his envy, which is the driving factor in all of this, is going to be fun to watch. You guys have a great day. Thank you very much for checking out this video. And we will talk to you later.